Uh, thank you very much for the introduction. Thank you very much for inviting me to, to this webinar. I'm uh, happy to share some thoughts with you. Um, and it's, uh, yeah, we, we just learned a lot about all these different, um, I would say, cost factors you might have. Um, my presentation is more about the um, maintenance and repair. Uh, so it's just a small part of what we just learned from Reaper, a small part of the costs, but I believe you can do a lot there um, to manage your equipment lifecycle costs. Um, and I'd like to share some thoughts about you uh, with you about industrial automation, how we call it, for the port equipment. Um, this is not basically uh, limited, I would say, to the mobile hardware cranes and reach stackers we just saw. Um, if you see the background picture here, this is a picture taken at uh, CTA, Container Terminal Altenwerder, where I'm based. And I understood, Holger, you've, you've also been here before. Um, so of course, we also talk about the SCS cranes there on the back. We talk about yard cranes. Basically, it's all the port equipment you can imagine. Um, and um, you could go for industrial automation. So let me let me share these thoughts with you. Um, I myself, I joined the, um, the ports business about 11, a bit more than 11 years ago. I was in automotive engineering and in uh, aeronautical, um, in the aeronautical industry before. Um, but um, now it's, it's port um, and it's port equipment. And um, yeah, basically I'm busy with um, um, port handling engineering um, since I'm, I'm working at HPC. Um, and if you procure a, a crane, I mean, this, this takes a year, year and a half, maybe it's, an, it's, if, it's if it is an SGS crane, a ship to shore crane, and then the crane is at your terminal. And then um, we, we start the, the most interesting part of the life uh, of, of this crane. It's the next 20 to 30 years where you operate the crane. And for sure, there you have a lot of maintenance and repair activities. Um, you need to buy spare parts. You need to keep the cranes up and running. And that's what it is all about um, when it comes to maintenance and repair costs. Um, but before I start, please allow me to quickly share um, just a few facts and figures about HPC. Um, if you don't know us yet, um, we are based in Hamburg. We are um, we were founded in 76, 1976, so we are 45, 46 years old now. Um, and um, we are a subsidiary of, of HHLA. Um, we have a Logistic AG. Um, you may know HHLA as, the, as the, the biggest port operator in Germany. Um, basically, HPC is the consulting subsidiary of HHLA and if you would say so, we sell HHLA's know-how around the world. Um, we are on some hundred experts from different disciplines. Um, and since the early years in the 70s, since the late 70s, we, we carried out a hell of a lot of projects all around the world. It's more than 16, even 1700. It's, it was in, in 120 countries and more on all continents. You see the, um, the map in the top right corner there. Every dot is, uh, is a project. Um, uh, somewhere on all these uh, six continents. Um, you see some sample um, clients we have in the, in, the, in the bottom right corner there. Uh, this is uh, private investors. This is private companies. This is um, also um, organizations like World Bank, IFC, KFW. Um, so basically it can, can be all. We even did um, uh, railway projects. In, uh, in the United States, for example, which is not so close to the water side, but also cranes involved. Um, uh, we developed HPC Ukraine. Maybe you heard about um, the container terminal in Odessa. This is now CTO, container terminal Odessa, as part of the HHLA, but it, in the early beginning, it, it was developed by HPC and we were running that terminal. So this is, um, this is operations experience we have at HPC for sure also coming from HALA, from HHLA, but we have our own experience with our own terminal for quite, quite some time. And um, yeah, as I said, so we, we, we are basically working worldwide. Um, what are the disciplines um, we do have at our company? Um, at the end, it's, it's all the way from the very first thought that you might uh, have a piece of land somewhere next to the water and you consider having a port there. Um, so is it worthwhile doing that? We could do the feasibility study. We would do the terminal planning, the master plan. We could simulate uh, the future container terminal or whatever you're gonna, whatever commodity you're gonna have. Um, 
we would then, um, and this is basically the business I, I do since I'm at HPC, is procurement assistance for equipment, um, but also for IT. So we also have an IT department. Um, um, we even do our own TOS, we develop our own TOS. Um, we support TOS um, applications. We do IT consulting, um, terminal optimization, operations assessment. So this is a lot of um, um, possible, I would say, projects we could carry out. Um, but as we said, we are here in engineering. So this is, uh, this is the technical part, um, which I would like to, to highlight now. So um, let's go ahead. Industrial automation to manage equipment lifecycle costs. Um, what is it about? And um, at the end of the day, I'd like to talk about, um, it's called a swing um, towards predictive and condition-based maintenance, because almost everybody who's running a state-of-the-art maintenance uh, and, and repair department will tell me, um, for sure we do, we do maintenance and for sure it is um, preventive maintenance, so we don't wait for the problem to come. For sure we do um, what the manufacturers like Leaper um, recommends us to do. So we do preventive maintenance. There, was, there will always be a part of, of reactive, of corrective maintenance, um, but I would say that's not all. So we can have the swing towards predictive condition-based maintenance um, and what it is about. Um, so it is about that you collect data, you collect data from your equipment. Uh, you have sensors on the equipment, for example. So while we talk, it's, it's available. Um, you transfer this data to your terminal um, IT, you analyze it and you may take um, appropriate action accordingly. So this is what it is all about. Um, and if we talk about such a concept of industrial automation, so what will it aim for? Um, we measure and capture data, equipment data, which is available and which is related to the current technical condition of the equipment. And we just exchange this data with our terminal IT systems. And then we would be able to, what I just said, to further develop corrective preventive maintenance strategies towards predictive and condition-based. And what would be the, the opportunities at the end? Of course, with this, we wanna save money. So we wanna decrease the total cost of ownership. Um, we want to better serve the customers um, because um, for sure, terminal performance and efficiency, this is a, a this is key if you are um, in, the, in the ports and in the transport business. And we also want to make our lives easier, so for example, by, by improving um, the predictability of processes and events. So this is very theoretic uh, approach or theoretic uh, um, 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 bullet points I've, I've got here. But um, just to make this a bit more, let's say, transparent and what it is, what, what I'm talking about, I want to give you an example. Um, it's just a simple use case, but we successfully implemented that at one of our terminals. And it's about wire rope change. So the wire ropes of an SDS crane, for example, um, these are um, quite expensive spare parts. It's quite time intensive, time consuming to change them, but you have to. And in order to, to be aware of the um, current situation, the current status of your um, wire ropes, you do inspections. This is shown in the, in the top uh, left corner here. So you do regular inspections of your wire rolls. Um, but so what is what is the challenge? So um, the day will come that, and this is the fourth inspection, this example, um, that you find out, okay, now it's time to change. But what if this is just, I would say, a day or two or three ahead of a, a vessel call, a, a big vessel is coming to the port and you need this crane. So what do you wanna do? You wanna do the rope change early enough and not affect this vessel core. No. Um, because you already know if you wanna change the wire ropes, you take the crane out of operations for a day, maybe two, it takes a while. So how can, you, how can you solve this problem to do the rope change early enough, but on, on the other side, as late as possible, because you don't wanna throw a, a wire rope um, on, on the rubbish, which is still, which is still um, good enough to, to be on the crane. Yeah? So what it is about, we, we collect data. We already have data. So we have, for example, the loads. The loads that, is, um, um, that are, are available on the crane because you have the load cells. So you know the load spectrum. Um, the load spectrum the crane did between the last and this inspection. Um, 
And what you do, you check the wear and tear of the wires, of the simple sing, single wires of the rope, but you can, you can add data you have, like the load spectrum. You can also add operational data. For example, did you do more empty loads or did you do more full containers? So did you, did you um, move heavy loads or not? You have data maybe about operational cycles. You have data about number of moves. Um, and all this data is available. Yeah. So you just transfer it to your, to your terminal IT and then you do something with it. And what can you do with it? For example, you can add artificial intelligence. You can add um, machine learning. And this we did here in Hamburg and this allows us to predict the remaining lifetime of the ropes. Just by taking into, con into consideration, into account what we learned from the past, what we learned through the inspections and what we learned from data which is available. So we are able to predict the remaining lifetime of the ropes, and then we can take appropriate action. So we can schedule the rope change and we can schedule it the best and optimum way. Yeah? So we need to find the optimum time slot to change the wire ropes because it takes so long. And of course, we don't wanna have the crane out of operations if we really need it. So this is a simple example, uh, a simple use case um, about what we, what we call industrial automation. Um, uh, by taking just uh, uh, available data, which we already have, and make something good with it. So benefits and opportunities. I think the journey has just started. I mean, we have, uh, through our membership of uh, in the PIMA and the Port Equipment Manufacturers Association, we had many talks with other members, um, component manufacturers, um, OEMs. Um, everybody sees the potential, um, but of course you have to, you have to use it and you have to, to make use of it and you have to, uh, to, have to benefit from, from all these potentials. And then we are very soon having all these buzzwords at the table, IoT, Internet of Things, artificial intelligence already mentioned, Industry 4.0. Um, these are huge potentials, potentials um, and I think we just need to benefit from them by better using them. Um, and at the end, um, I already explained it, the benefit definitely is to increase um, the transparency. So you know how the equipment is, is, is feeling, I would say, um, and you have um, the possibility and the chance to, to have a real-time decision-making at the end of the day. Yeah, so, and then you can, you can really tap this full potential and it's not only operationally, it's for sure also commercially. So the later you purchase a new set of wire ropes, which is really expensive, the better it is for you. Yeah? And the longer you use the old wires, the better it is. Yeah? And at, uh, at the end of the day, it will lead you to, to a state-of-the-art maintenance strategy. And for sure, you will have higher operational um, availability, less downtimes. And if you look at total cost of ownership, you will minimize your maintenance costs. And that is what we talk about here. So we manage equipment lifecycle costs in a, in a positive way for us. And this is my, let's say, last slide and a little bit of a vision, like a holistic concept, I would say, for condition-based maintenance. So we have the key cranes uh, at, the, at the key site, at the container terminal. We want them to be highly productive. We need them during loading and unloading. We need them when the vessel is there. But um, yeah, we, we already know a sudden breakdown can have a direct, direct impact. So we, we risk to have... Uh, um, the shipping lines um, asking us for money because there were penalties penalties if we don't um, fulfill our um, our targets. And on the other side, we have idle times. So we have times between vessel calls, particularly in Hamburg. We always always have have idle times because there is um, there's the River Elbe, and um, of course there is the the tidal changes, and there is times where we don't have any vessel, um, or for sure we have times where the the birth occupancies uh, are, are quite low. Yeah? Also, then we can we can afford taking a crane, a full, a whole crane out of operations. And what if we just, um, with all the data we can we can have and we can transfer from the cranes to the terminal IT? What if we just build up a digital twin? Yeah, so we would be we would be um, in a position and able um, to let's say mirror the crane. Um, in our IT, uh, we have a real-time mirror. We, we know the status, 
and then we are we are able to to schedule maintenance orders and in particular and that was the example with the wire ropes in particular if it's time consuming yeah and for me this is the basis for for a state of the art strategy maintenance strategy so you go um you still you already have your your, your um, preventive maintenance plans but you go the step further go a step beyond you go for predictive and condition-based maintenance and that was um that was a, I would say, a, some some thoughts I'd like to share with you in this regard. Um, Andreas and Sebastian, they will confirm. We are while we talk, we are we are in a position to to extract data from the cranes. Um, also, Lipa for sure um, will offer a, a remote maintenance um, scheme whenever it is needed. But I think we can use it. We being the terminal operators, we can use it ourselves as well. Um, and um, this does not exclude the manufacturer. I mean, we, we always need them to to support us in, in doing maintenance. But we could we could improve our own our own work and our own um, uh, maintenance strategies. Yeah, that is uh, that were some thoughts I I'd like to share with you. Um, please feel free to shoot your questions. Um, no worries. And if you need to get uh, some more details, some more info. Um, I would also spread my contact details and I'm happy to further discuss and assist you wherever you need assistance. So thank you very much.